And welcome to today's special edition of In The Labs with Hannah. Hi, I'm Hannah. I am a software engineer here at Vectric. I've worked here for about two years. I mainly work on all of the web systems at Vectric. So you guys all know that I'm supposed to be the Inco and Design and Make. And in the office, I also look after all of the internal web systems that we use. So this project that we're going to share with you today is a two-sided project that Hannah's designed. Yeah, so I made these little two-sided blue tip birds um, after being really inspired by some blackbirds that I saw that James Booth made on his website Chawthonworks, which we'll link you to down below. So let's go and take a look at the file itself in the software. Okay, so let's open up the bird file that Hannah's created. So here is a set of vectors, we've got grayscale components here in the 2D view. So let's tile our windows so we can take a look at that model. So this is the bird model that Hannah has uh, modelled up herself. Um, if we go to the layers tab, we can just switch off the layer 1. I'm just going to switch on the bitmap layer. So you can see that Hannah's used this image of a blue tit as a guide to create her own bird. So I'll switch that off and then we'll switch on layer 1 and if we go into the modeling tab we can take a look at how she's built this up. So if I just undraw the tabs level, the limit plane and the sculpt level and switch on the bird level you can see all of the individual parts that make up this bird. So you can take a look at how Hannah's modeled the bird and built it up. So once she's created all of the individual components, what she's then done is use this icon here, create a component from visible model, and what that does is it creates a brand new component based on what it can see in the 3D view, which is this uh, component here. Okay, so she's basically just created a new component based on all of the building blocks, in which case she can then go in and sculpt, smooth and blend in parts um, as she requires. So you can see her finished bird is in place there. You can see we've got some tabs in place, uh, which is on this level up here. Uh, this is just using the basic uh, 3D tabs uh, from your clip art folder in here, so using the rectangular tabs, uh, size and stretching uh, to size. If we go back into the modeling tab, we have a level here called limit plane. Now, as we are creating a two sided part, we've input a zero plane using this icon here and if we just select that component go into the properties you can see that it has a base height of negative 0.13 and this is just to ensure that when we come to cut this out our tool is going to go past zero down by 0.13 and that will basically get rid of uh, any seam uh, or cusping line that would be left around uh, the bird itself. Uh, so if we just close that down and we'll just minimize that level uh, and then what she's done then she's basically took everything copied it over to the bottom side okay so you can see here we've got the bird within the bird level and we've got uh, the same tabs uh, within the tabs level there's no need for me to have another limit plane level as we only need to cut down further on just the one side uh, you may have noticed that we have a series of circles on both sides of our material and these represent our dowel holes in order for us to get correct alignment in terms of X and Y when we come to flip the material over. So let's take a look at the toolpath. So over in the toolpaths tab, you can see we've got a pocket toolpath, so that's for the dowels. You can see we're just cutting partially in to our material block. Let's just preview that. You can see that there. 
Uh, then we have two lots of roughened toolpaths. So let's take a look at those. Why have we got two? So the first one, we've got a 3D roughened toolpath using an eighth inch end mill. Okay, we're doing it on the selected level, which is the sculpt level. So that's just the bird. So we're ensuring that we're only cutting away at the outline of the bird with a little bit of an offset in there just to ensure that the tool rolls past the edge of the model. A machining allowance of 0.02, so just going to leave a little bit of skin on there for our finishing tool to cut away at. Um, and this one is done in a Z level strategy where we're going to raster along the X axis. It's going to go back and forth. Uh, if we look at uh, some of the parameters we've got in the tool, uh, we're doing a pass depth of an eighth of an inch, so we're taking the full diameter there. Um, and we've got a step over of 40%, so pretty standard here. Uh, so let's just take a look at how that looks. Okay, so you can see all of our steps there, like so. Then we have another uh, 3D roughing toolpath. Okay, so pretty much the same setting, except this time we are, are applying a 3D raster along the x-axis. And if we take a look at the tool in here, this time we've got a pass depth of 0.4. So we've pretty much cut away um, at the majority of the material. We're just getting a little bit closer here, and uh, doing it as a 3D raster is going to allow us to really uh, get as close as we can. So if we preview how that looks, you can see uh, how that's going to look when we come to cut that out. And so that just leaves a little bit of material left for 3D finish. Uh, here we are using uh, a tapered ball nose in this case uh, and if we just go ahead and preview that we can see how that's going to look. Perfect, so once we're done with the top side we can then take the material block off of the machine and then our first operation would be to machine the dowel holes uh, directly into the spoil board. Uh, once they've been drilled into the spoil board we can then locate the top side to the machine bed uh, so everything's aligned correctly in X and Y and we can continue to run the other three toolpaths which are pretty much exactly the same as the top side. Okay so with the file set up we are now in the labs and we've selected our material. So we found this piece of oak and we're going to use up some of the free space in the corners. And for this session we're going to use two tools and we're going to take an eighth inch end mill. So you can see Hannah's holding that tool there and we're going to use that to first initially cut the holes that we'll use to insert our dowels for the top side later on in the session and then we're also going to use that tool uh, to run the 3D roughing pass over the birds just to hog out the majority of the material. Following that we're then going to do a tool change and we're going to change it to a 16 inch tapered bit. Again Hannah's holding that tool there and we're going to use that tool to do a 3D finish on. So let's go and set up the machine. first side of the machining done. So we've got our three dowel holes that our dowels will fit into and then we've got the first side of the bird which has been nicely finished. 
So now we're ready to machine the bottom side of our bird. So as you've seen in the software earlier, uh, we're going to machine the dowel holes of the bottom side directly into our spoil board and that is what's going to give us perfect alignment for when we come to actually flip our material block over. We're then going to run our 3D roughing pass along with our 3D finishing pass to finish off the bird. So let's go set that up. So here is the finished bird, so this has come off the machine and it's already been sanded down a little bit as we saw earlier to remove the tabs from the top and bottom so I used the belt sander for that but it's still got quite a bit more finishing left so I'm going to sand it by hand with some coarse sandpaper just to remove the majority of the roughness and then use some really fine stuff like this here, um, that will make it really really smooth. Um, so I've actually made one of these birds before and with this one, this one's finished. I decided to sand down the bottom of it um, in order to allow it to sit um, because this one at the moment will just flop over. So it's up to you whether you decide to do that or not or make it into maybe a hanging ornament perhaps. Um, so with this one I finished it off with some beeswax furniture polish. We got that from John Lewis but I'm sure you'll be able to find it in stores near you um, and that really brought out the colour of the wood which I really like and you can really see the grain which I think in our case it makes it look really bird-like and the final thing I did was to use a little bit of nail polish so actually this stuff here gold nail polish um, on the eyes and the beak because um, I thought that really just brought out those details and just made it look a little bit more fancy so that's it so that completes this session of in the labs with Hannah and her two birds and if you like this project and want to try it yourself, then we're going to make it available for free on b and Co. And we're going to put a link in the description down below to where you can find that. So, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you want to watch more videos, then subscribe to our channel for more in-labs videos. And if you decide to cut this project or any of our other projects, we really want to know what you're cutting, so make sure you tell us about it in the forum or on Facebook. Thank you for watching.